Hiya, I am Husky Light and welcome to my channel and thank you for stopping by. Thank you so much for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, Google Pluses, everything. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the support that you're giving me. Um, now, I wanted to talk about uh, moon phases and blood moons and hunter's moons, harvest moons. Um, and just give you an idea of actually um, what moon phases are, what the, what it means around the full moon every month, the lessons that we can learn from the energies of the moon. We all live, um, for those of us that are awakening or awakening, you will come to find out, um, as I did, um, that the energies of the moon, the energies of the planet very much have an influence over our decisions, the way we live, the way we feel and our thoughts from the collective consciousness as well around these times. So we've got a couple of moons coming up over the next couple of months that are not as important as all the others. They're all important, but they are quite important in the, the grand scheme of things about where we are at the moment. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of history of why certain moons are called certain names and, and what's going on with that. So so sort of long long ago ages ago cultures around the world used to keep track of the seasons by giving um, special names to each reoccurring full moon throughout the year and their names were always associated um, for the entire month in which each full moon occurred today we've got the advantage of looking um, at these these full moons aligning our energies with the cultures that we're drawn to or to the perspective of, of our own personal spirituality that we follow. So for instance, if you're a European of a European tradition or you're English like myself, then I would tend to go with the farmer's almanac and there is different names for different cultures. So maybe you could go with Norse or maybe even Native American tradition. You can literally just pick and choose the name uh, that you feel most connected to around the moon names. Also around these full moons, when we are aligned, when we're in tune, when we're awake and we can feel the energy coming down from them and we can pick up the energies of the full moons, they have special meanings and they have sorts of spiritual les lessons that we can be working on, that we can be put to use to manifest with and and put that moon's energy, that moon's power to the best use for our highest good. So starting off with a harvest moon, a harvest moon is the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox. So this September 2015, it falls on the 28th of September. Now this full's na full moon's name is attributed to the Native Americans. Um, it's done that because it marked when the Native Americans were supposed to harvest their corn and also on a harvest moon the energies that we can use the energies the lessons that 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 full moon the harvest moon brings up for us to learn are all about discrimination um, about the ability to make fair decisions about having good sense having perseverance, having self-confidence in yourself and having the ability to be able to analyse situations fairly. The energy of this moon is one of balance. It's of being rational, it's of being practical and this is the moon that will help us to truly understand uh, the concepts of work, of service to ourselves and not only service to ourselves but service to others, service to the universe and our soul mission and what that is. What we need to guard against during this full moon is being overcritical of others, about being cynical about life um, and also around, um, it also teaches us or, or at least those of us who need to, to go through some of these lessons as part of our spiritual growth, you know, some of us may have already gone through this or it will bring this up again, is our capacity for being creative for our capacity to be curious about the world, about judgment and about justice. Onto the hunter's moon, it's also called a blood moon as well and used traditionally, it used to refer to the first blood moon that appeared during October after the harvest moon. So this year the hunter's moon is on the 27th of October. 
in tradition and still today hunters use the full moon of October to stalk things like deer, chicken, foxes um, and they used to do this by the autumnal moonlight which was that full moon is really bright and really close to us and they used to hunt then and save food for the coming winter because the fields were traditionally harvested in and cleared in late September hunters could easily see their prey they could easily see foxes they could easily see other animals that would come out at night and eat any of the grains that had fallen during the harvest clearing so they became easy prey for the hunters and this is why they used it at that time because the approach of winter also signif signified the possibility of going hungry especially in sort of pre-industrial times when we didn't have supermarkets and that the hunter's moon was generally treated uh, with special honor so historically it served it as a as a as a, fe a feast day a really good day for them to celebrate both in northern U europe and in native american tribes we don't do it so much nowadays the hunter's moon literally looks down on a world that is fully prepared um fully prepared for and regenerate for regeneration and rebirth because everything has been harvested and it's ready to be reseeded for the year ahead to grow yet more crops so the lessons and the energies of the blood moon or the hunter's moon are really what lessons do we have to learn what are our goals what are our dreams in which we want to go forward with now this year we've also got we've also had when we have it in october we will have had four blood moons which is quite unusual um in fact extremely unusual from what i know of uh, what i've seen what i've read and come to understand we have not it's called a tetrad and we've not had this type of tetrad where we've had four blood moons also we've had other planets aligning in exactly the same way as we did when jesus was alive thousands of years ago bc so around that time when he was alive when the bible was was created and everything there was four blood moons that marked his coming um so now i don't sort of believe that jesus is coming back or anything like that but I do believe that because we've got that alignment of stars because we've got those blood moons in the same sort of time span and it's the first time since jesus was alive i think it signifies that there is large changes big changes coming around us um, and a lot of us are becoming aware of that we also know that for big changes to happen for peace to reign for things to for us to be able to learn to manifest the reality that we want we may have to go through a certain amount of chaos first in order to have that storm and for the peace to arrive after the storm so i think maybe around the time of the the blood moon and the hunter's moon coming up this year then we may see chaos around us we may see things going on around us that we don't particularly want to see and as long as we can learn to just be a witness to it not get involved in it not be affected by it not let our not absorb these bad energies at all around that time then we can get through that with no problems and we can go on to manifest the the good reality that we want the good things out of life so i hope this helps um with just a little bit if you want to sort of further look up about the rest of the full moons that go on during the year if you just literally type it into google you'll get loads and loads of information but that gives you a little bit of insight into why some of our our full moons are actually named throughout the year and what that means and and where in history it's come from and as I say, if we can pick up on the energies of those full moons and the lessons that need to be learned from those full moons, it makes us stronger as we go forward and helps our spiritual growth in a lot of ways. So thank you. Um, namaste, blessings and light. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.